Ten years ago, lovable machines like this were ostracized by a Weights and Measures Act because their ability to talk, which owed much to the gramophone, incidentally, was not matched by the accuracy of their weighing mechanisms. But today, talking machines are making a comeback, and this time there are no problems with either accuracy or vocabulary. Listen to this one. It's 7.07 p.m. 7.07, and all's well. And the silicon circuitry at the heart of this tiny gadget will also wake you up at a preset time. It's now 7.06 p.m. And of course, it'll ensure that you don't drop off again. Attention, please. It's now 7.07 p.m. Please hurry. Who'd sleep through that? There's a talking machine which uh, takes time to think, but when it's got it worked out, will actually speak to you in French. You have to tap in an English word. Spells father, commit it, fingers crossed, and it should tell you what the word is in French. Perfect. We've got a Japanese electronic mathematics machine that produces a string of numbers. You're supposed to be adding these up, incidentally. And if you are not sure of the answer, the machine tells you, and who'd argue with that? Behind it, uh, perhaps the Western equivalent. Two, five, four, six, point three. One, five, divided by one, two, point, six, equals... Got the answer? Two, zero, two, point, zero, nine. Again? Two, zero, two, point, zero, nine. Always gets it right. All these talking machines use a similar technique, and I can demonstrate what it is on this home computer. Whatever continuous sound wave this microphone picks up can be sampled, and each sample point can be given a digital value. Tomorrow's world. Let's see what those samples look like on the screen. Tomorrow's world. Now, in actual fact, something like 8,000 samples are taken every second, but only comparatively few of them are stored by the computer, because the truth is, much of what you say is, strictly speaking, unnecessary. By combining many of those 8,000 samples, the computer can still recreate a fair impression of the volume, the pitch, and the articulation of the original sound. This time, it's the computer that's doing the speaking. Tomorrow's world. And of course, the fewer digits that we have to store in our silicon memories, which are at the heart of uh, both this device and all the other new ones that we've been looking at, then the greater the vocabulary, the greater the scope of the speech that these units can produce. So, in a device like this, the sounds are recorded digitally, but unlike a recording on tape, any part of that recording can be replayed instantaneously by instructions from the keyboard simply identifying which particular digits it needs to retrieve from the store. Time to move on to something else. <laughs> Certainly. Different sounds forming different words can be drawn out, strung together fast enough to sound pretty close to real speech. This is another talking machine. Is the line through? The Birmingham number you are calling has been changed to 021. Birmingham is actually the first city in Britain where callers who are trying to reach changed numbers will be redirected immediately, not by an operator, not by a tape recorder, but by a chip. And talking machines will also play a part in tomorrow's air transport. London Heathrow at 1120. 320 degrees, 08 knots. Cab OK. In a little while from now, airline pilots approaching Britain's airspace will have the latest weather information instantly available on their radios. One central computer kept up to date with the computer itself left to do the talking. You may remember, though, that research into speech characteristics has often suggested that humans imitate the way the strongest personalities in a tribe or a particular area talk. That's how a dialect develops. So when machines like these take over, we're all going to have to be very careful 
about what happens next. Six, oh,